Hollywood has had a terrible summer, with the lowest total gross for the season since 2006, not adjusting for inflation, and the worst performing Labor Day weekend since 2000 in North America. The year hasn't been devoid of hits, however, it has had a number of flops, and in summer the industry seemingly struggled with a number of very mediocre films that didn't flop, but didn't do as well as they were expected to. On top of that, mainstream big budget film is up against fierce competition from cable and streaming services. On top of that, ticket sales appear to be dwindling in the long term, and ticket profits are inflated by increased charges to the audience, rather than increased attendance. So, three reasons. Films this summer being on the brown side of meh, the historic rise of Netflix and cable services, and the historic decline in ticket sales are what have really whipped Hollywood this season. Obviously, these three factors are heavily connected. But first, let's look at the easiest to quantify, and perhaps the greatest opportunity to be a little indignant. I don't think I'm pushing any boundaries by saying that Hollywood has always had the incredible ability to produce utter rubbish. But you might argue that 2017 has been a very special year for tone-deaf, unwanted, and completely miscalculated popcorn flicks that have been poorly received by critics. King Arthur, The Dark Tower, Kidnap, and on the indie side, Valerian. Of course, it would be easy to point at the executives of Hollywood Studios and call them idiots. Call them people who don't even understand filmmaking. Call them people who don't even understand that there is a huge difference between a successful movie that can trade on its unique je ne sais quoi and making a carbon copy that is inferior in every way. It would be very easy to point your finger at those people and say that they're foolhardy, greedy, and everything wrong with filmmaking. The truth of the matter is the decision makers in studios are usually very clever, usually very able, and although not always experts in film, they usually are experts in business and marketing strategy. There are, of course, exceptions. But I do think in fairness to studio executives, if you look at their histories, they are there for a reason. They have usually proved themselves in some way. I believe that Hollywood is on some level its premiere level, creatively stagnant, and that maybe, not for certain, but maybe, things are actually going to get a lot worse over the next 10 years, and that Hollywood knows this and is in denial. According to the Wall Street Journal, movie attendance has dropped by 5% in 2017, compared with the same period in 2016, higher ticket prices acting as a bit of a buffer for lower ticket sales. This isn't new. The ticket sales apocalypse has long been feared, and long been coming. Really, the figures aren't in the crapper at all, but they do look bad when you see cinema audiences' figures per capita over the years. But why is that? Well, obviously, there have been certain historic changes. The advent of TV, the advent of cable, the advent of video on demand, the advent of YouTube. Hollywood can croak all it wants about rotten tomatoes. You say tomato, I say tomato. Agreed. They can croak about how rotten tomatoes is damaging the industry all they want. There are far more significant and far more dangerous market forces at large. In case you've missed it, there have been a number of mostly incredulous articles in a number of places about studio executives warning that the review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes has too much power, and complaining that negative review scores are a threat to the industry. The somewhat taken aback tone of most of these articles is well placed. To myself, other onlookers, and I'm sure to you, blaming poor movie performance on poor reviews smacks of the sort of pass the book bullshit we might expect to see from low budget narcissists. Surely it is clear that yes, movies' financial performances can clearly be impacted by negative reviews, or at least tied to them. But it's also shown that movie performances can have no correlation with critical reviews. But the reviews, by both professional critics and members of the public, are responses to a product, not attempts at sabotage. Negative reviews may or may not affect films, but they're negative because the film isn't liked. 
Reading articles about how the industry fears and despises Rotten Tomatoes, it seems as though the feeling is is that Rotten Tomatoes is doing the industry a disservice by allowing potential audiences to read what others think about certain movies. So what's our strategy to get this new film out there, Steve? Review embargo and tricking people into the cinema? That's sustainable. The obvious response, surely, is not to make wallpaper paste flavoured films on $150 million, not complain about people writing negative reviews. I'm almost expecting the producers of the Emoji movie to write an op-ed piece in the New York Times about how haters are going to hate. The vocal criticism from quarters of Hollywood High Command is just a symptom of frustration. Rotten Tomatoes and the feelings of the filmmaking upper echelons are more or less irrelevant compared to the threat of Netflix, Amazon Prime and Hulu. Other services are available. I guess. Why pay $9 for a showing of a single movie when you can pay something similar for a 30-day subscription of a service where you can watch hundreds or thousands of films and TV shows as many times as you like, any way you like. Of course, there is still the spectacle of the big screen, the theatre surround sound, the wonder of why the floor is sticky. But more importantly than that, theatres retain exclusivity for some time. However, the convenience of Netflix and the like is eating into Hollywood's business. The truth is, Hollywood is never going to see those stats of its ticket sales, in numbers or in profits, truly drop off. But the real danger isn't in a nosedive, but rather in stagnation. As I said in my video about Hollywood cynicism, Hollywood is desperate for shared universes, for franchises, really, for a golden formula for films that it can repeat and repeat with no risk. Hollywood is frightened of the risk of doing things differently, and of the chance of failure creative innovation carries. So it offers movies that try to replicate previous successes. But really, it's like saying to an artist, make another masterpiece, just like you did before. It's like saying to Rembrandt, paint something exactly like Storm on the Sea of Galilee, and make it just as original. This is the time Hollywood needs to innovate with its highest profile movies or at least offer content with depth. Not all big budget movies of today are as by the numbers as something like The Mummy, but many are. It feels as though indie studios are just as likely to put out films that are high quality, and Netflix and Amazon Prime now offer exclusives made just for their services. And those exclusive TV and films have high production values and known names, as well as niche appeal and a feel of actual creative exploration. Hollywood feels far more reticent than these companies to make a good film that analysis doesn't say will definitely totally for reals this time be a massive success. It's this unwillingness to offer anything other than blockbuster spectacle, something that has become quite stale now, that has made the summer of 2017 suck for Hollywood. Movies like It have certainly helped this summer, but such films, able to gather and engage an audience, have felt thin on the ground. I think I should also note, I don't think audiences have become sick of sequels. If anything, The Last Jedi, due to be released in December, will be a massive boost for the year. But for high concept movies to work, whether they be sequels or originals, they can't just be films that can be explained with 10 seconds of trailer. They also have to be good. They still have to be stories that people want to see, and I think that's why the summer of 2017 was tough, because Hollywood didn't offer enough of those stories. But, historically, it's the shift to cookie-cutter content and the outflanking of Hollywood by its competitors that may mean the summer of 2017 isn't as anomalous as it should be. I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this, and whether you think Hollywood can revitalise itself. As ever, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my new podcast, which is coming out tomorrow, if you're watching this today. And I'll see you next time, where I'll be talking about how CGI has become a staple of the modern blockbuster. See you then.